Hey, hey, guess who's back on the central line? <clears throat> it's me. I am back on the central line. Today we're going to talk about another station that I wanted to make a video about because I think it's nice, namely Holland Park. Holland Park is in a leafy suburb of West London which takes its name from, well, a park. The station is fairly small, served only by the central line between the busier Notting Hill Gate and Shepherd's Bush stations. The station was originally part of an 1892 proposal by the London Central Subway, which would have been an underground line from Shepherd's Bush to Gower Street in the West End. That scheme didn't go ahead, but it was merged with the Central London Railway. The Central London Railway was a line originally intended to run from Cornhill in the city to Bayswater, but after the merge it would take over the London Central Subway's planned route out to Shepherd's Bush. So by the time Holland Park was actually built, it was a Central London Railway station. When first planned in 1891, it was to be called Lansdowne Road, but for whatever reason, the CLR figured that Holland Park was a better name. If I were to speculate, I'd say that Holland Park just sounds more pleasant, it's a little bit countrified. Notting Hill, Holland Park, Shepherd's Bush... It all sounds very leafy and rural, doesn't it? The CLR were very interested in commuter traffic, so anything that might convince people to move to their turf was no doubt welcome. The station was designed by Harry Bell Measures, the central London's architect. Measures was very fond of his red brick and glazed terracotta, and he gave the Central London Railway a set of distinctive Art Nouveau station buildings. They were both exciting and modern, and ornate and charming. One of the CLR's money spinners was to build their stations with a flat roof capable of supporting a building on top. You can see this at Oxford Circus and Queensway. At Holland Park, no one took them up on the offer, and in my opinion that's a jolly good thing. A tall building would be totally out of character for the area. The Central London were masters of marketing. They encouraged the nickname of the Tuppany Tube to emphasise that not only was their line useful, but affordable and egalitarian with its tuppence flat fare. I feel like at Holland Park you can see how marketing has been worked into the architecture. The station has a very homely feel, both inside and out. I mean, homely in the British sense, not the American, although I suppose it's a matter of taste. The point is, the booking hall and the street-level building have a pleasant, comfortable feel to them. Meanwhile, at platform level, the decor emphasised the CLR's other great draw. It was electric. The tunnel walls were painted white, although they're looking rather grey today, and the platform walls were lined with white tiles. These emphasised how clean the line was as compared to other contemporary steam-powered railways. Incidentally, the Central London Railway was neither the first electric tube line nor the first to charge a flat fare, but I guess the City and South London Railway just weren't as on top of things with their marketing. Technically, the platforms at Holland Park are one island platform with the lines running either side, but that's not quite so obvious when you're down there. The sections of track in station are also built on a hump, which was a standard measure to make stopping and starting trains easier. The first train through Holland Park was on the 1st of March 1900, a test train from Shepherd's Bush to Queen's Road, now Queensway. The station opened on the 30th of July 1900. It's always been a fairly minor, intermediate kind of station, not exactly unused, especially during the Notting Hill Carnival, but nothing like as busy as its neighbours. The only major incident in its history seems to have been an electrical fire on a train in 1958 that killed one passenger and injured 51. As a result of its relatively quiet status, Holland Park has remained pretty well preserved as compared to other central London railway stations, which have mostly been either modernised or completely rebuilt. I'd like to draw your attention to this CLR no-exit sign from the 1900s, and this central line map from the 1940s. Note that West Ryslip is described as West Ryslip for Ickenham, a name that's long obsolete. The most obvious change from an exterior point of view is this weird kind of UFO-looking thing that's landed on the roof. This rotunda, as the architects call it, was put in in the late 1980s as part of a lift replacement program. I cannot say it improves the station's looks. Still, despite this alteration, London Transport resisted the urge to modernise the whole thing, for which I think we can all be grateful. In the 1990s, the station underwent a renovation programme. 
Holland Park now is much as it always has been. Perhaps not as glamorous or exciting as some of the other stations along the line, but definitely worthy of your consideration. Well, I hope you enjoyed this double dutch tale from the tube. If you did, please do click the like button and perhaps consider subscribing for more. I would like, as always, to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon for your generous support. You are the terracotta tiling to my Art Nouveau frontage. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the tube.